All right, so I keep seeing a, uh, a lot of questions about boost building functions in the Holly software. So this is a video showing you two different ways to do it. Um, this right here is your boost ICF. Um, if you open up a global folder that's already been created or if you're already familiar with the software, you know where that is. Um, most of the global folders that are already created that are based around a turbocharged or supercharged application will already have the boost ICF. If not, <clears throat> you're gonna go into toolbox, add individual configuration, and then you're gonna click boost and pick whichever one you're working with. So for this reference, dual port wastegate, open. Well, it was already there because it was already there. So anyway, click in here. <clears throat> this is your uh, boost controller setup. Um, there's 101 different ways to do this, but we'll just go with the canned uh, setup. And then right down here is boost builder. So <clears throat> you can set parameters to activate it uh, based off of TPS and then a minimum boost and a maximum boost. So with a uh, turbo car and a converter, there, this kind of gets tricky, but um, say we activate this for to start at four pounds of boost and it's gonna stop at 12 pounds of boost. Um, click this here and this will uh, enable this whole table to work with when it's on the trans brake. Now this is where you'll actually start to, you know, make some changes. And this is with fixed timing. So <clears throat> what this is, is this is an actual fixed timing value. So if your tune-up has say 30 degrees of timing in it at idle and 28 degrees of timing in it at say four pounds of boost or something, none of that matters. Whatever you key in here is what the fixed timing will be. So let's call it 15 degrees of timing. And it's going to be 15 degrees of timing the whole time you are on the trans brake above 75% TPS and in between four pounds of boost and 12 pounds of boost. This is what's in their software and canned for, uh, for anybody to use. <clears throat> this functions pretty good unless you have a pretty tight converter. With a really tight converter, um, what happens is you wind up knocking the wind out of it. So when it makes four pounds of boost here, it winds up actually pulling it down off of the chip and uh, kind of like lugs, lugs the motor down because you just knock too much timing out of it all at once. Um, so I've been playing with a uh, advanced table for about a year and a half now and every car I've ever done it on, it seems to work really well. So I'll show you <clears throat> how I do that. So the same way we added um, our boost ICF, we're gonna add an advanced. So toolbox, add individual config, advanced, default. This is basically a warning saying don't be retarded and blow your stuff up and then try to blame somebody else for it. <clears throat> so make that go away. Now you'll notice a new icon here. This is your advanced ICF. <clears throat> so click here. Your advanced ICF opens up a whole bunch of stuff that you're not going to understand right away. Um, all I'm going to do is go over a, a different boost builder function. I don't want to get into all the different things you can do to this with this because there's a lot more than I can cover in a you know 10 minute video. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, disregard this stuff. This is all based off of gear. What we're going to want to do is go to the 1D table. So right here you have the option of eight different tables. And like I said, you can do a ton of different stuff with this, but uh, I'm just going to show you Boost Builder. So <clears throat> table one, enable the table. We're gonna name it Boost Builder. That's my dog in the background barking because he's a dick. Um, the table type is going to be a timing offset. So we're gonna find timing offset out of the list. Again, like I was telling you, there's a ton of different stuff you can do in here. But for now, this is all we're gonna work on is timing offset. Okay, and then the X axis is gonna be Boost. So scroll up. <clears throat> There's boost. Okay, so it'll what it's doing is it's populating a table right here that you're gonna modify. <clears throat> We're going to hit switch to enable, and this table will activate when the trans brake is enabled. So <clears throat> we can do a secondary activation. So if you're backing up with the trans brake 
Um, it's not enabled unless you go over a certain amount of TPS, but for this application, you're not gonna be on the trans brake in reverse, so like trying to build boost, so it doesn't really make much sense to add an additional activation. Um, <clears throat> so what this is, is a one dimensional table where you can plug in whatever boost numbers you want and you can manipulate <clears throat> a graph for timing. So like with my personal stuff, we've left as hard as like 19 pounds of boost. So let's just put this number at 20. Okay, and what it does is it'll auto populate all across the bottom here from zero to 20, okay? Zero means it's not touching your <clears throat> base timing table. So if you've got a tight converter and you've learned that at four PSI boost, you can't yank 15 degrees of timing or 20 degrees of timing out of it because it's gonna pull it off of the chip. You need to be a little bit more gradual with it. So say at <clears throat> what, you know 1.3 pounds of boost, we're gonna pull, I don't know, 8.3 degrees. And then at 2.7 pounds of boost, we're gonna pull uh, 9.6. We're gonna to continue to gradually climb. So now before we had a fixed timing value of 15 degrees when we tried our standard boost builder and it came up off the chip and it, and it lugged the motor down because it just didn't have enough timing in it to keep, to keep it up on the chip. <clears throat> so we're gonna, hold that 9.6 until we make say 5.3 pounds of boost and we're going to keep pulling timing out of it the goal here is is with an automatic car you just get it to start cannon firing it'll light off a lot faster to build a lot more boost so this base map probably has around 30 degrees of timing in it at 5.3 pounds of boost um so now we're actually only going to have <clears throat> 19 degrees of timing in it at 5.3 pounds of boost <clears throat> Just keep climbing as much as you want. And uh, this is really a, a, a tuners type of thing. You know, you're gonna have to figure out, you're gonna have to play with this and see, you know, what your what your engine likes. I mean, if you've got a, a if you got an engine that doesn't make any power on motor, obviously the more timing you take away from it, or that you're gonna have to wait a little bit until it starts to make boost before you start pulling timing out of it. But if you got a small block forward, you could probably yank it you know, 30 degrees out of it at idle and it'll still make a ton of boost because it's a small block forward. Um, <clears throat> the thing with timing is that it's instant. So the second you let go of the trans brake, it's gonna go back to your <clears throat> standard table. Um, so you can do whatever you want here. Uh, this is also another way to kind of limit how much boost this thing's gonna make on the trans brake if you're just learning your dome control in the boost, in the, uh, <coughs> shut up in the uh <clears throat> in your boost controller software if you're just learning it so say you don't want to make over 16 pounds of boost well <clears throat> don't touch the timing at 16 pounds of boost and what it'll do is it'll stop cannon fire and it'll kind of lay over and sit there at 16 pounds of boost or at least give it a better chance at sitting there and being more consistent at 16 pounds of boost um this is the way i've been doing it uh it seems to work really well hopefully this answers some of your questions uh if not, um, shoot, shoot away and I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'm going to go because my dog is being a dick. All right, thanks. Yep, there he is being a dick. <laughs>